This is Jason. And this is Jesse from Storm Ruler. And you are listening to Richard Metal Fan. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Richard Metal Fan Interviews. This is episode number 60. And today's guest, we have none other than Jason and Jesse from Storm Ruler. Today we're going to be talking about their musical journey from where they started to now, pretty much starting up the band, their debut album Under the Burning Eclipse, as well as like black metal, the songwriting, and all that good stuff. So without further ado, let's go talk to Storm Ruler. So what's up, guys? I am here with Jesse and Jason from Storm Ruler. How are you guys doing today? Wonderful. Doing well. Yeah, uh, getting some chores done on our day off. That's right. Awesome. So basically, the, this format is I want to talk about like you guys' musical journey from where you started to now. But before we go into that, let's just dive right back into the very beginning. What were the first bands that got you two in the metal and for you, you Jason, to play guitar and do vocals and for you, Jesse, to play drums? So who wants to go well, first? Kind of funny. Uh, D Board Gear for both of us was a big one, but uh, Vortex in particular, yeah. we're actually touring with Bork Nagar right now. So hell yeah. Kind of cool. I actually interviewed Simon a couple months ago. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, I uh, definitely am a big fan of, you know, all the classic second wave black metal bands. Dissection, and Dawn, bands. Allegiance, yeah. Windier. Allegiance, Dawn, Windier, huge influence. Shooter. The start of our, bunch of, them. of our career. <clears throat> yeah, to Shooter. Uh, Drum-wise, you know, all the... Nick Parker is huge influence on me. Shoal Bow, the old drummer, Dimu, and Dindy as well. And uh, yeah, anyone who lays down the Imperial uh, Black Metal Assault. Emperor, right. big influence. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, what were you guys' like, like bands before starting up Storm Ruler? Well, <laughs> I play in a handful of other bands. Uh, I play drums in most other bands. Oh, wow. I actually only play guitar in Storm Ruler. I play drums in a band called Bastard, which is like a speed metal-y kind of black rock and roll thing. And then uh, no, a band called Harkonnen and a band called Faustian Nihilist. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I played drums in a band, Cast the Stone. That's uh, with Mark Kleppel from Misery Index and Derek Ingeman from um, Till and the Illegals. Uh, I play in a power metal band called Oracle. Um, back home and uh, have a couple projects that sometimes surface like uh, there's a band Zymora Jason and I have both d dabbled in and which will um, lead into how we actually yeah got linked up and started Storm Ruler yeah yeah and uh, uh, yeah I played up drums on the first Scour album uh, mm, damn I even knew that yeah so yeah I always got some some irons in the fire yeah. All right, and then, then how did you two to meet meet me and form Storm Ruler? Well, we knew each other prior to really playing music together, but uh, in 2018, he was. When did you actually start? In 2017, was Zymor or something like that? Yeah, 2017. I, I uh, a friend of ours who runs this band, Zymora, a little black metal band from uh, Illinois. I was, uh, I remember being at like FTA actually in 2016, I think it was, and they were like mentioning wanting to, to you know, having to have an EP they want to write. And I was like, oh, I'll play drums on it. And then I played drums on some recordings of that band. And then we did a small tour. And then not long after that, the guy who was playing second guitar kind of bailed. And so Dreyfus is like, I'm thinking about asking Jason. I was like, oh, you totally should. You know, he knows his way about some black metal music. And uh, we played a few shows around town just for fun. And then uh, before long, you know, we would always get together after shows and just kind of like hang around and drink and listen to music and stuff. And then finally decided we wanted to write our own black metal yeah, record like, instead of playing somebody else's. You know, like, what, didn't really... stop playing everyone else's stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like write our own stuff uh, that we felt we could really get across. Like generally, what you know appealed to us black metal should style. be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we made an album just kind of you know over the course of like a year, you know, and. Uh, little longer with the whole production and everything and just made a record for fun and then it kind of blew up out, yeah <laughs> yeah, and yeah then like totally unexpectedly yeah and how did yeah, they we didn't plan any of this yeah we didn't have a <laughs> oh, band yeah. we didn't have a picture we weren't we, you know it wasn't like a thing that you know, we practiced every week in the jam yeah, room we didn't but, even have know. a band name until like three months before yeah. we actually released the fucking yeah so record. it was a really weird way <laughs> oh my god about it. And the fact that it's the project that has like taken over is strange for us because it's not a band that we've ever been in <laughs> yeah. we're just like well like, this is our this is i guess we got to do this now 
Yeah. So, so, so when you when you made the the debut, you know, was this like before you you got signed to Napalm? And how did Napalm find you guys? So we uh we wrote the record in like 2019, slowly recorded it, and then finally decided we wanted to put it out because we had other material we were working on, and then uh <clears throat> we self released in like November, I think. But then we decided to uh, put it on Black Metal Promotions on YouTube. And uh, they premiered that shit on December 1st. And then, like, December 3rd or 4th, Napalm emailed us yeah. expressing interest in the record. We got that email that every band wants, or phone call or contact, <laughs> where someone's like, we are interested in this, and we will get behind it. And we were like, wow, really? Okay, cool. So that started off like, like a, a hurricane. Oh, um, shit, we had to get done. Like, we had to become a real band in a matter of, like, yeah, a month and a half. Yeah, like, that, that kicked off a whole lot of activity. And and um <laughs> due to, and then that was that was it so was the yeah i mean they got a hold of us on like december 3rd and then uh after that it, it was like around the holiday so everybody was busy so we could only do like a select few things before christmas and new year's mm -hmm. and we still had to turn in all of our uh album stuff by like february 1st so yeah we, like so, we could, an album so we could be ready for release in may so we had really just like a month to get band photos done make a video. Uh, get a, yeah music video get yeah. like layouts for artworks and shirts and shit done and all kinds we of had to go things. hard at it for a while lots of homework yeah, yeah. lots of stuff got crammed in yeah and you, you guys really hit the ground running with under the the burning eclipse like what was that whole whole like making of the album like what? us getting really stoned down in his basement <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was really pretty low-key like uh we recorded oh, the wow. drums. Uh, the hey, drums we recorded in my the whole basement, thing ourselves, pretty much, minus uh, guitars. The bass in my basement and the vocals in my basement, and then our friend Drethus from, from Zymora, Zymora. Yeah, yeah. recorded the guitars at his place. He had like a guitar rig of you know recording quality, and uh, and uh, my friend Derek from uh, Phil Phil's band, like to if I play with the Cast of Stone. Uh, he came in because he was actually going to be coming in town around that time, and he came in and played bass on it for us. And two like so marathon like eight to ten hour sessions. sessions you know, was... he had, we sent him like a song or something, but he didn't really. He, he basically like learned his way. Learned the riffs, and, we, like, and then we wrote bass lines. Came up on the with spot. ideas on the spot, <laughs> and like you know, two huge, massive bass guitar recording sessions uh, ended up resulting in a really good bass vibe on the record. That you know, I still hear like certain parts. I'm like, oh yeah, oh, oh wow, and, uh, yeah. So. I, we basically just recorded it all on our own, uh, and then had it mixed by Gabe. Yeah, Gabe. Uh, Gabe was final. Dreethus did like the mix, but then we realized we <laughs> needed like a final mix or whatever. We sent it to our friend Gabe back home, and uh, yeah, and so that's it. Was basically just us. Uh, there was no rush. It was just us messing around, um, you know, recording it on our own in my basement. <laughs> All right. So, was there like any preconceived idea idea making this album? Was there a lot of like improvisation and trial and error? I mean, we kind of like had an idea of the sound we wanted to go for because like we're really big into dawn like windier allegiance and stuff like that and we think you know it's proper black metal it's yeah the direction we wanted to go so we aimed for it and i guess hit it yeah i mean we demoed the songs or whatever and then when the kind came to actually record it you know there's always a little oh maybe this beat here or maybe do this part twice or whatever there's some curating but yeah, yeah, uh, a little polishing up here generally there. yeah <laughs> we the songs didn't deviate you know deviated a little bit from their original forms but yeah we basically knew we wanted to sound like you know black metal warfare assault you know uh right. lyrically i think we had the idea of yeah i mean we had all the stuff done i think before we started writing lyrics and then uh like well we need something to sing about yeah and we're like we're not gonna sing about satan and yeah like, you, know. you know evil whatever so uh we oh, got like we Let's... both love the dark souls game so much and we were like man this this stuff is ripe for lyrical content you know and uh so that was something that we kind of settled on for like a handful of the songs but we kind of knew we didn't want to like go all in on that you know because that would that would only limit us yeah we don't want to be a themed band yeah. i mean so you know. so Definitely, there will always be some FromSoft inspired lyrics, though, because there's just like a bevy of material to draw from to there. From it, yeah. So, yes. yeah. Yeah. So, there's basically like a sound that y'all all wanted, or do you also wanted to try to like experiment a little bit? 
Well, like, oh, yeah, yeah, a little bit. Because I'm like, we love those bands we mentioned, but we also love like bands like Summoning and stuff. So like, yeah, we kind of want to we want to put those Summoning aspects in it, yeah. but also with those like Marduki aggressive sections and the dissection drastic yeah, sections. Yeah, I love a good dissection and immortal like clean parts and stuff like that, and like vibey parts. Like we wanted, we didn't, we wanted to have some parts where you could kind of like you know zone out a little bit we didn't want to go full on like drone but we want to have you know in the midst of heavy loud riffs and grooves and like black metal style, by, you know. throw a couple trippy parts in there you know so like uh yeah we we didn't really want to we didn't want to bore anyone but we also didn't want to like overkill you know the blast assault you know so we tried to space it out Right, right. And the, with the meaning of, of the mu music, is there like a concept or a story that follows or is it like open to interpretation? I mean, there's there's a few songs where I actually wrote the lore for the songs, but overall we get the inspiration from certain topics. But I try to write the lyrics in a manner that if you know what it's about, cool, and you can dig it. But if you don't know what it's about, you can still take the kind of the story and make it how you want, if you will all right yeah like you might not know it's a dark soul song but the lyrics are there and then the, the, yeah the cool yeah. lore and stuff is there to intrigue somebody enough to pick it up i guess all right and as you as you two mentioned before you play with different bands is there like a different mind frame frame depending on the project because you are or is there <laughs> like a method behind all the madness that applies to everything there's definitely a method but uh there's i mean about how i go about writing riffs or something like that but definitely got to jump into different mindsets i mean storm ruler is very you know all along the black metal melodic and shreddy side and then bastard on the other hand is very rock and roll so you know i gotta switch it up yeah right. between, it's definitely and, widely different three di <laughs> widely different styles of metal and the bands that i play in regularly too so it's fun to you know have this project where i can do this and then another project where i can power metal out and you know but overall all of our riffs and melodies all start off as a mouth riff on a phone so. yeah singing riffs <laughs> into your phone man is the way oh. you're sitting in a stoplight and you get a killer riff you gotta whip out your phone those are some of the best riffs coming you gotta document them you know figure them out later yeah, yeah that's awesome and a question for you you jesse as a drummer do you usually need to lay down like the beats before you hear the music pick or do you need to hear what the guitars and are doing ah, a beat up? usually comes to me right away you know oh. and we usually kind of have like an idea of like in this section we want to bust into a halftime thing with some doubles maybe a yeah, six eight yeah. or something with drums it's really coming up with fills you know coming fills, up with different yeah. fills like you don't want to do the same fill over and over but at the same time it's only so many fills you can come up with when you're like do a fill you know there's only so many you know jazz chops you can throw in there or whatever you got or you know so it's like with me as far as like comp comp composing on my instrument it's fills are where i probably yeah, yeah. Like, the beats, spend the beats, the most are, time. beats yeah. are easy to find beats are all day yeah, yeah. The, the beat is just the thing you do in between doing <laughs> fills <laughs> yeah yeah it's important yeah. to keep in time because there's that old saying if your drummer sucks then your band sucks yeah like sometimes so I, like your drummer, to, yeah. I like to, if it's like fast kind of furious riff with a lot of buzzsaw, <laughs> I like to like hit cymbal accents to kind of like help the riff along. Or if you're the listener and hearing it for the first time, you can kind of tell what's going on. And the boys on stage, they can feel where I'm at. <laughs> but then sometimes it's fun to just not have any accents at all. And just, you know, it just kind of tell, it just kind of goes with what, whatever, uh, whatever works, you know. All right, and and for you, Jason, as a as a, you're a vocalist, do you need to hear music in order to come up with lyrics, or do you usually have like a concept in mind that can help determine the outcome of the music itself? I usually have an idea, I guess. I will we'll usually write the uh, music obviously before the lyrics, unless you're Dan Swano and you write the lyrics first. <clears throat> but uh, no, I'll use I'll hear the music and then I'll kind of pick the topics based on how that song might feel, the mood of the song, if you will, like. If it's a real bleak song, I'm not going to be singing about, you know, Siege in a Castle or some shit. <laughs> it might be a little different. And, 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 and you're also playing guitar. Do you ever try to, like, figure out where your vocals are, depending on the guitar riff? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely, I try to not sacrifice good patterns just for guitar, but I definitely keep in mind how I'm going to play it and sing it at the same time. I've gotten pretty decent about that now, <laughs> So. awesome and uh i got two more questions for you guys guys i always love to ask the ask artists this because it's like the hardest question of all you ready what you, what it, kind of like going back to songwriting how do you guys know when a song is done 
when it's finally recorded. <laughs> we'll, we'll, yeah. That's like the so, best. Like, uh, that's like the yeah, best question ever. We're always tweaking a little bit. Yeah, I mean, we'll tweak the leads. day we're recording the actual yeah, song. But yeah, like whenever your song gets done and you're just like, oh, yeah, you, you know, that's when you know it's pretty yeah. close to being there. You know, yeah. You kind of just know, I guess, or yeah. And then, yeah. Some people would say the songs are never done. Songs are never done. I, I mean, I a would, year from now, I'm sure we yeah. could go back and listen to a song like, man, I really wish I, wish I, I had put done this bill here. Exactly. Like, I wish I would have changed that note in that lick or something. Exactly. But, you know, uh, you, you kind of know when the, when you hear the song, completed song or the you hear it all the way through in demo form and you're like, you're man, happy, this, yeah. is, this is going to be a good one, you know? Yeah. Huh. All right. And the final question I wanted to ask you is like, you guys are from St. Louis, Missouri, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Was there like a St. Louis, seat? Norway? Yeah, St. Louis, oh, yeah. Norway. Actually. Yeah, because because when hearing black black metal, you obviously think Norway, but but St. Louis, Missouri is kind of interesting. So, was there like a scene in you guys's guys' town not, that you fell apart of? Really. Not really. I mean, there's like a small collection of metalers in St. Louis, and uh, it, the metal scene, as far as like the extreme metal scene, is very not a lot of extreme metal there. Yeah, <clears throat> all of the like extreme bands in St. Louis for the most part share members. Yeah, there's yeah. really it's really not known as a haven of metal and why a lot of tours skip over St. Louis. Maybe more yeah. tours went there, you know, more people would uh catch on. But uh no, there's not a lot in the St. Louis metal scene as far as like black metal. Or there's a small metal. handful, but yeah. not not a whole lot. Sadly. All right. Like we've only played there once, you know, in our <laughs> band and our, our short career, we only played one like show in town, you know. Oh damn. So uh, before we go, I just want to thank you for this interview. Is, you, is there anything else with uh, Stor Storm Ruler that you'd like to promote? I'm looking forward to seeing you all, all in a couple of weeks on Devastation of the Na Nation. I'm, yeah, I'm going to see in you Atlanta? all in Birmingham. Yeah, Atlanta Our, and, and, and Birmingham. Birmingham. Cool. Hell yeah. I mean, right that lineup's, the lineup's so goddamn good, I have to see it more than once. Well, yeah. we'll play at like 625, so get there early. <laughs> I will. <laughs> yeah. so, so guys, everyone, Storm Ruler, we'll see you next time. Thanks, man. We appreciate it.